Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Let's Draw. I'm your host, BJ Dell, and in today's new episode, part three, the final installment of this little mini series that I started a couple weeks ago, we're gonna finish up this cartoon hippo design that we started in parts one and two. Today, we're gonna add colors, highlights, and shadows. We're gonna take a little bit deeper dive than what I usually do in these videos, though. We're gonna talk about how to add gradients to your colors, also how to add multiple shadow layers to give your designs a little bit more depth and dimension. So if you wanna learn all about that and more, keep watching. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video today as always using the iPad Pro. This is a 12.9 inch 2020 Gen 4 model. Apple Gen 2 Pencil, the app is Procreate. And if you follow along to the previous two episodes in this series, I did the sketching on episode one, where we took just a really rough sketch, turned it into that more refined sketch. And then the last episode we went in and kind of inked everything, got it ready for the coloring stage. That's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm not gonna go over the brush that I'm gonna use cause we're gonna kind of jump back and forth. So uh, when I switch those, I will let you know but let's leave the inks as the only one turned on here. And if you guys haven't watched those previous two episodes, I will link them on a card up at the top so you can jump back and check those out. So I'm gonna make a new layer here. We're gonna bring this down underneath and we're gonna call this one Flats One. So I'm gonna rename this. And I already went through and kind of made a color palette for this. So it's all good, ready to go. I will go ahead and link that down in the description below too, uh, over on my website, if you want to download the color palette, basically it's just going to be a, a JPEG on there, just copy it and save it. And then you can open it up uh, just as a separate layer in Procreate. So we got flats one here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to do a flats two as well. We'll kind of show you why here in a second. So we're going to rename this one, call this one flats two. So there we go. And let's go back to flats one. This is where we're gonna do the main coloring here to start out with. But first I wanna go back up to my inks layer. I wanna click on this and I wanna set this to reference. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to drag and drop colors down here on the flats layers using that line work as a reference, but it's gonna be on a separate layer. So you don't have to worry about, you know, doing any damage to the inks and lines layer. And then once we go in and add shadows and highlights, that's going to help us out too, having them on separate layers. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and start dropping these in. Like I said, I've got the colors already down here. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this brown one first, kind of like a brownish gray. This is going to be kind of the base color. So I want to do this bottom portion first, and then I'm going to go up to flats too, and we're going to do the head portion. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because I want to do kind of a gradient today. So it's going to look a little bit different here. And you'll see here we've got kind of a gap. So we need to fill that in. So if we go back up to our inks layer, we're just going to connect that line there because I didn't quite get it all the way connected the first time when we did the, the inking video. Let's just get this kind of in there. Make sure I'm on the right brush here. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go back to the color here, go back to this flats two. Just drag and drop the rest of this. So there we go. We've got pretty much the hippo itself colored in. I'm going to wait to do some of the other colors here in a second. So now what I want to do is I want to switch my color to this darker gray. It's the next color over in the palette there. So we've got that selected. Now I'm going to go back up to my brushes here and this one, I'm just going to use uh, one of the basic ones that come with procreate, just the soft airbrush. So I'm going to use this one and then kind of do a gradient down here at the bottom. So to do this, I'm going to start here on this belly region. I want to go ahead and select this layer and we want to alpha lock this. So it's going to let us color on this layer and stay inside this. So now that we've got that, I'm gonna do is make sure my brush is really, really big here. I'm just gonna kind of softly pull up from the bottom and you'll see it's starting to lay in that gray. And I just want this to kind of fade up into the top. So now that we've got that, I wanna do the exact same thing on the head. So we're gonna go ahead and select this one. Wanna go to, once again, alpha lock. And then I wanna just start coloring with that airbrush here, starting at the bottom and just kind of bringing it up. So it's real subtle. 
you know, it's not a major jump from one color to the other, but just gives a little bit more kind of, uh, I guess, a color selection to make it more appealing to the viewer. You know, just something a little bit extra than just going in with one solid color. I think I'm going to do the same thing here on that little bit of the, the hoof or hand there. Okay, so now that we've got that, I also want to color in his belly here just a little bit different. So I'm going to make a new layer and let's go ahead and I'm going to put this one in between these. And we'll call this, we'll rename this one the belly color flat. All right, now that I've got that one, I'm going to go back here to my colors and I'm gonna select this peach color here. Now I'm gonna switch back here. This one I'm gonna just use my basic uh, standard anchor streamline, which is part of my cartooning brush set, which is available on Gumroad and I'll link that down in the description as well. But this one, honestly, I'm not doing anything crazy with this. So it just is one I'm used to. This one then I also wanna set this as clipping mask. So that's gonna keep everything kind of inside here. So I'm just gonna, gonna get a good curve. It kind of follows along what's already there. I think I'll bring it down just a little bit further here. Like that. And we'll bring this up and around here. So I'm going to kind of connect everything so that I can go in here and just drag and drop the color here in a second. To do that, though, I'm going to have to go back in to that inking layer and turn off reference. Otherwise, it's just going to color everything in. So we've got all that. I think all those lines are matched up. So we're going to go back up here. Like I said, we need to turn off the reference layer. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So that's turned off. Now we can just go to this one and drag and drop this in. See, it fills in really nice there. And then I'm just going to clean up these kind of overlapping areas here. Pulling back out now you can kind of see what we're left with now i want to go ahead and kind of add in that gradient to this as well at the bottom so let's go ahead and select this belly color flat layer and we're going to set this to alpha lock once again that's going to let us color directly on there and then this color next to kind of that flesh tone peach it's just a kind of darker brown color i'm going to select that go back up to my brushes and go back to the airbrushing that soft airbrush and just kind of pull up from the bottom with this as well. I'm just doing this super, super light, barely touching at the bottom there. So I don't want it to be too crazy. I just want, you know, a little bit kind of flow of that gradient from the bottom to the top. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and let's see. Let's, let's go ahead and add some of that peach color here to the top as well. So, we go back up to our flats too we can just go in on this one and then let's switch back to that peach and then once again i'm just going to use the airbrush for this i think i'm going to turn down the size a little bit here a little bit further just kind of get the tops of the the nose here their little nostrils we get those and then maybe the tops of the ears do some in there once again, just kind of letting up as I bring it down and get the top just a little bit brighter and lighter. And it's going to fade into that gray. So that looks pretty good. Maybe the top of these eyes here too. So there we go. We got a pretty cool look to that. I might do the top of the head just a tad bit. So there we go, a few extra colors in there. Let's go ahead and from here, I wanna go ahead and change the background color to kind of like a brownish color here so we can kind of see what we're working with. 
because of course here we still got to do the eyes and everything else and with the background white we're not going to be able to do that so let's go ahead and we can just go in on a new layer here and you can combine these if you wanted to because we're pretty much done with those but i'm going to go in on a new layer if you're working with an ipad that doesn't have this many layers feel free to kind of combine these as you go so we've got a new layer let's just call this uh nails and teeth so we're going to rename nails teeth flat Okay, so we've got that. This one automatically set to clipping mask, so we need to turn that off. Oops, we can't actually do that because it's gonna affect our other one. So let's just bring it down. Actually, let's bring it on top of everything here so it doesn't affect anything. That'll work. And then let's set our inks back to reference. So there we go. Now we can just drag and drop these in. pretty quick there we go and then I'm gonna do one more layer here let's do this one for the eyes we'll just call this one eye flats is that and we'll just drop the white into here oops let me switch back here to my Oh, standard anchor, that'll work. And then I've got a color save for the eyes too. This is kind of blue color, so we can just drag and drop those in there. So we've got that, and let's go ahead and... I'm trying to think which one we can do it on. Yeah, let's go ahead and on the flats too, this is the top head one. Let's go ahead and take the alpha lock off now and then we'll go ahead and do the top here that same blue color for the bandana let me just drag and drop these in there then and then finally let's go ahead and let's just pick kind of like this darker gray down here and we're going to drag and drop that in for the tail so now our color flats are completely done um, and these are a little bit more complex color flats because we do have that kind of gradient on these. It's not a real legit color flat with just totally, you know, solid colors. We do have that gradient fade, but now we can start to add kind of some of the extra details and the fun part of it. So let's go ahead and go back up to the eye flats first. And for this, let's go ahead and make a new layer and we will rename this one and call this eye shadows this is one of the benefits of making separate layers for these is we can do some of this cool stuff pretty easy so now that we've got that renamed let's go ahead and set that eye shadows to clipping mask so it's going to mask to the eye flats layer that we did then we're just going to select a black color here I didn't add black in here just because it, you know, it's black. You can get there pretty easy. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back up to my standard anchor streamline and just kind of pull kind of oval shape around here, kind of following that natural kind of curve that the eye already has that we did on the inking section. We'll just fill this in. Same thing here. We got that filled in with black. And actually, I think let's go ahead and not use black. So we've already got these. So we're fine here. But I did add another color in here I want to use instead. This kind of brownish gold color. Let's use that instead. And then we're just going to select that layer and just fill it in. So we've got that kind of brownish gold. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a blur to this and then drop the opacity. So it's going to make the eyes a lot more interesting. So going over here to our adjustments menu, I'm going to go to blur here and just slide this. 
so you get this nice kind of blur pulling back you can kind of see what it looks like here so now that we have that set let's go back here again to adjustments and just drop the opacity of this so I kind of want this kind of nice blurred curve to the eyes kind of makes them look a little bit three-dimensional and then going back in with the eraser we can kind of add in some highlights here kind of add in that glare it's going to make it even more kind of realistic in 3d you can kind of pull back and see just how cool that looks if you want to put some more lines down here to the side you can do that as well just kind of following that around really makes it pop even more and then same thing here if you want to pull one off to the side there so there we go pulling back now you can kind of see the uh the cool 3d effect that that adds to it so now that we've got that let's see what is next i think going to start the shadows is going to be best here so let's go ahead and do that now that i've got let's see got pretty much everything done here on the color flats and those eye shadows and everything so i think i'm going to go ahead and just merge all these together so let's just pinch all those together so now we've got one flat layer here everything's on one so we're good let's go ahead and make a new layer now and let's go ahead and call this one shadows so i'm going to rename this one shadows and then let's go ahead instead of using black this time i've got this like really super dark like navy blue color once i switch here you can see on the color wheel it's just a further down version here on blue so we're going to use that for the shadows so we are all ready to go so let's go ahead and start dragging in this i'm just going to completely drop this in here and then let's just start pulling the shadows around here so i'm going to go back to this make sure my standard anchor streamlines on that's what i'm going to use here and then just kind of start building up the shadows as i go around and this one, I want to set this to clipping mask as well. So it clips in there. You'll see that line that I drew outside totally disappeared now. Also, I'm going to turn inks off of reference so I can use drag and drop on this. So we're going to go back up to inks, click on that, and turn reference off. So once again, all that's doing is just allowing us to go around here. And once we have a big section connected, we can just go ahead and drag and drop. If we left that reference on, it's gonna drag and drop that entire body section because it's all one. So drag and drop that in. And I'm on inks, I forgot to move back. So we need to switch that back up. Always make sure you're on the right layer, kids, because you can get too far into something and then realize your mistake and lose a ton of work. Once again, got to turn the clipping mask back on. That line disappeared. Let's make sure we're on the right layer. We are. There we go. Clean this up a little bit there. And then just drag this around. Just like we did before we had to undo everything. Because I forgot that I was on the wrong layer. All right, there we go. So drag and drop, boom, we're good. So obviously this is not the color of the shadow we want. We've got to drop the opacity on this. So let's go back to our adjustments, hit opacity, drop this down so you can see what it's doing here. So we got a really kind of cool shadow going on. So we'll lock that in. I'm gonna erase this little overlap here. Let's go ahead and get some of the other bigger sections here. Once again, if you guys watched the previous videos when I was talking about doing the line weight on this, I've got the light source coming in from this top angle down. So that's where the light source is going to come in. That's going to basically allow me to know exactly where my shadows go. So that's basically what I'm doing now is just using that light source coming in. Talked about before, if you guys aren't good at knowing where shadows go, Feel free just to grab something laying around the house, throw it on the table and put a flashlight on it and just kind of move the flashlight around just the angle that the light hits it and just kind of see in real life, you know, how a light source affects 
an object in the real world, you know, that has that three dimensional space. It's one of the best ways to, to get better at kind of being able to visualize where all this stuff goes. I know it's kind of daunting, you know, starting out, not knowing where everything goes and why it doesn't look right. The other thing too, that I've talked about before is making your lines for the shadow here. Like see this curves kind of around the way that the, the lines are for that snout. And this is really important too, because I see a lot of people starting out, and I've talked about this before, that they'll basically just say, okay, the shadow's on this side and just draw a line straight down. And then the shadow's just to the right of that line. And that's not something you want to do. You see how this curves here. It's a lot more, you know, visually appealing, having that curve like that. See this one here, same thing, as it kind of curves around with the shape that, that takes. That's really what I would recommend doing is working on getting those curves down, working on you know, just making it more fun to look at rather than just a plain line going straight down the center. Nobody wants to look at something like that. It looks off even if you're not super good at knowing, you know, what makes a good shadow or, or something like that. You can still look at, you know, a design where somebody just put a straight shadow line down the center of a design and you can tell, okay, this, even though I can't pinpoint what it is, something looks off and that's usually kind of what it's going to be. So just take the time to invest in learning how light affects objects and you shall get better with time. It just takes practice. See here, I'm just putting the shadows along the lines at the bottom of kind of the folds in the fabric of that bandana going across the head. And even though I'm adding in shadows now, you're going to see that I'm actually going to go back in here and do some erasing on the shadows too. So erasing on the shadows almost gives the effect of a highlight in that area. Uh, it's a good way to break up different colors. too. So if you've got too many shadows in a certain area, I've talked about in previous videos that it kind of blends in too much and the viewer is not able to see if it's one solid color. They can't really see it's a shadow because they don't have any you know, original color to reference it to, to say, okay, yeah, I can see that this is darker because this, you know, color sitting here is lighter. So like over here, that's what we'll do just for instance. So this, the, the gray of the leg here is not setting next to another color of gray. So you can't really tell. And it looks like I've got this color here a little bit off. Let me fix that. We'll overlap in the lines. All right, there we go. So since this gray here is not setting next to another gray, you can't really tell, okay, yeah, there's, you know, a, a shadow there. So what you can do is go back in to your shadows, use the eraser and just kind of erase some of that shadow. So you can see, okay, yeah, that is two separate grays. Now with this, like I've talked about before, this might not be totally right as far as the way the light source is coming in. There's probably still going to be a shadow there, but I think it's better to remove a shadow there to kind of show that there is one rather than do it correctly uh, as far as the light source would come in and you know not have the uh, viewer be able to tell that there's a shadow there so i think that's important same thing as what we're going to do up here we're going to pull away the shadow a little bit just because you can't really tell that there is one right there we'll kind of pull this around here too to kind of give off that effect as well so there we go. Might even pull up a uh, kind of a little highlight thing here to make it even more apparent that there's a, a shadow there. So there we go. You can kind of see now. Yep. Can really tell that there's a shadow there. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep going around here. I'm going to pull in the shadow down from underneath here. And this one's gonna be a little bit different. I've talked before. I'm not sure if I've really done it too much, but since this is a three-part video series, I usually, if I go from start to finish on a design, I usually try not to add in too many extra layers on the shadow just to keep the overall runtime of the video down. But this one, since it's broke up and I'm not having to worry about doing uh, you know, the, the full sketching and the inks and everything on one video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add in some extra shadow layers too. So we'll get to that here in a second. So I've got this coming around. I think I want to have this pulled even more here. So we're going to have like a nice curve here. 
that wraps around the arm. And then it's gonna come up here into the top as well. There we go. All right, what else? Uh, I think I wanna do, once again down here, just a little bit too much as far as shadows go. So if we do just some funky little highlight curves down here, it's gonna read a little bit better to show that the shadows exist there. So we'll do a little highlight thing there and maybe one back here as well. There's that. Pull out some highlights here for the toenails. Remove that there. Need to get that back in. So there's that. I don't really like the way this curves though. So one more time, pulling out and seeing it. I think I'm gonna fix that one just a tad bit. And have this kind of curve, almost like it's coming down into this section here. So it kind of, once again, kind of follows that organic flow of the lines that we've already got in there. And it just looks a lot better and more natural if it does that. The same thing here. I think I want this to be pulled in the same kind of form that that line's taking. So I'm going to make this a lot bigger here so I can go back in. There we go. So you see that line here, that line here, kind of going in that same direction. All right, so that looks good. Let's see what else. Do some shadows here around the eyes. Always like to do this, kind of makes the eyes a little bit more inset. So we got the shadow over here, but we're gonna get to that in a second. Let's go ahead and go inside the ear, make that shadowed. That's good. Same thing. This one we can't do because it's already completely shadowed. So let's go ahead and add the shadow here to the bandana. Once again with this, kind of want to just follow the curves of the folds. So pulling off here in here bring those around once again I want this a little bit heavy shadow over here because the way the light source is coming in we're gonna have it coming in this way so Need to have a little bit more shadow there. Fix this one here. So anything like fabric and stuff like this, you can get away with some like really sharp and jagged shadows to kind of show that fabric sense. Just cool little stuff like this. So this is almost like adding in line work without actually using lines. So when you are inking, just think that you can go back and add stuff like this. You don't have to add a ton of line work in your inks. You can do a lot of suggestions through the, the work of the shadows too. Just little tricks like that work. Oops, go to the racer. Just paper those down. All right, looks good. Race a couple of sections in here to give the sense that there's two different colors once again. All right, so pulling back now, that's what we're left with. Overall, really good, but like I said, I wanna kinda add in a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a second shadow layer. So let's go ahead and go to our layers here hit plus and let's rename this one and just call it shadows darker okay so now that we've got that once again we want to use the clipping mask here keep everything inside let's go back and make sure we're on the right color which we're still there so 
make sure ink uh, standard inker brush is turned on now this is basically where i just want to take some areas that have some big overlap like here and just kind of make these a little bit darker of a shadow so stuff like that this right here give these a little bit darker of a shadow same thing coming around this bottom and we're going to use this kind of sparingly we don't want to go super crazy with it same thing here once again, this is going to break everything up and it's going to show those shadows a little bit more. You're going to be able to kind of differentiate between, you know, what's a shadow, what's a highlight. This also allows us on areas like this for the nostrils. This already is a shadow. So we can't shadow it in again. We have to make a new layer. I know I forgot to shadow in this one originally, so we'll just do it on this layer. Go up here, do this ear now, because once again, this was completely shadowed in. So doing that ear here will allow us to do that. And then same thing around this eye. You see here, I had the shadow coming down here. Since this is all shadowed over here, I can't really do that without doing a second shadow layer. But that's why I use this. Pull it up around here as well. All right, so once again, now we need to adjust the opacity of this and drop this down. So we're gonna go up to our adjustments layer, hit opacity, pull down this. So we wanna be able to see it. We don't want it too dark, don't want it too light. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Then you just gotta go back in and tighten up some of the areas to make sure everything matches a little bit better. Make sure the flow going into the line work you've already got kind of makes sense. So that looks good there. Let's go ahead and do a shadow here because you're going to have a pretty heavy shadow underneath this arm and the hand come down. There's that. And anything else? I think overall that looks pretty good. Let me get some more shadows here. This nail. all right yeah i think that looks pretty good i like it so we've got the shadows done let's go ahead and hop on over and do highlights now so once again going to our layers plus for a new layer let's call this one highlights so we're going to rename this one i know in my videos i don't always you know name the layers but i think going forward i might do that just because it helps you guys at home follow along a little bit better i think Going back to our palette, just gonna click white here, and that's what we're gonna use for our highlights. Skin, clipping mask. And this is just gonna be kind of the reverse of the shadows. So, like I said, coming in from this section here, top left-hand corner is where my light source is coming in from. And just looking up at the camera and seeing the time on this, I know I'm already over half an hour, so you can kind of see what it takes to do a little bit more as far as, you know, doing the color gradients and doing the different shadow layers and stuff like that. Usually my videos from start to finish sketch and highlight shadows, inking the whole nine, you know, usually I try to keep them around the half hour point. And this one's running that full half hour just with doing the color flats and the shadows and highlights so if you guys have watched some of my previous videos too and have noticed oh that I, I would have maybe done this different or this different just realize with those i am kind of rushing sometimes i don't sit and do a video over and over again you know i do pretty much one take and that is it i don't do any editing on them i don't do any you know speeding things up so a lot of times i would you know approach a design a little bit different if I was doing it for myself or, you know, previously for a client, stuff like that, uh, you can kind of see with this, this is a little bit more, I guess, real time of how I would approach something and take a little bit longer doing it just cause I can knock out a design in those videos, you know, in half an hour, don't feel like you have to, and feel like that's what I do all the time. Usually if I'm doing a design, I'm going to take, you know, at least, uh, an hour on a design something like that just to, to get everything perfect so these videos just kind of try to keep them quicker to keep the attention of the audience 
which I know sometimes a little hard on YouTube, but just going around here, just kind of add in some of these highlights. See there, I really don't want one there because that's going into that shadowed area and that wouldn't make sense. So just putting one there, that would work. I want to do one like here around the top of the belly coming around. Once again with this, I got to be careful not to hit the shadows because that's going to look weird having a highlight and a shadow together. So this one's going to have to be refined. I just want to get the overall shape of it in here though. And then I'll probably pull it back a little bit. That's the other thing too with these videos. I, I do try to keep everything in real time. I don't like to use time lapses just because I don't think that's really going to aid you as the viewer to, to learn and see the exact process that I'm using and kind of understand the thinking as well that goes into it and what's kind of going through my mind as I'm laying this stuff down. I know that's one of the big things that, you know, for me and if I was just learning, I think that I would want more than anything else is to kind of understand the thought process of okay why is this line going here and why does this curve like this and that's my approach to it all so hopefully that makes sense for you guys and hopefully you enjoy it I'm just really trying to get this to look natural to curve from kind of this curve line here back up into that it's kind of hard to do on a, a curve that works like that but I think this is going to be a little bit too bright let me drop down the opacity some more on these highlights because I think that's just too too bright that's a little bit better even still with this I'm not super happy with that highlight I think I'm gonna pull this completely away from there I think that looks a lot better I'm gonna tighten it up just a little bit so this is what I do to my process is I'll I'll lay something down and go back and forth in my previous videos where I do all these in one shot usually if I laid that highlight down I would have just left it and said no oh, it's good enough but looking at it and pulling back kind of wanted to tighten that up it just was too too big this little bit of a highlight around the belly button here and then we can add some highlights here across the bandana I'm not gonna go super crazy with these just kind of couple here and there and then maybe one along the top here I pull a little bit of highlight over here on that ear And maybe a couple of bigger circles, ovals here. It's going to have a pretty close proximity to the light source and probably give off the biggest amount of shine there. Do the same thing over here. Then I think add a couple highlights here just so the tail doesn't look totally plain and I think I'm gonna go back into shadows once again going back to my blue and just doing a couple more shadows here along the side once again just so this doesn't look super plain kind of forgot about that so pull back just to make sure I think pretty much done darker shadows layer I'm gonna pull this around here there's some pretty big overlap there with that foot and how heavy that is that's going to give a little bit darker of a shadow there and kind of bring that home a little bit more and then i think around here the top of the tooth bring a shadow there All right, looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the background color back to white. But uh, one last thing, I just thought about this. Uh, I've got another color in here. So I've got this super dark brown 
right here. It's next to the blue, in between the blue and that dark, dark blue that we used on the shadows. So I'm gonna use this one. And then the last thing I wanna do is I wanna go up to my inks. I wanna select this and I wanna fill the inks in with that color. So we're gonna fill layer. You'll see now the outline is actually that brown. It's not quite black and it just makes it look a little bit more fun. It's not, you know, a solid black. I just think it kind of brings the design to life a little bit. I just thought about that as I was switching back to inks. I wanted to do that because then I want to sign down here. So let's get this signed. And there we go. That's episode three coloring in the cartoon karate hippo that we started with episodes one and two. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you like today's video too, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos. Also, I talk about it in every episode, but if you haven't joined yet, hop on over to Facebook after this video and join the group that I made for artists like you over there. It's called Keep Creating a Learn, Draw, Share Art Community, a place where you can share your artwork, meet new friends. It's an awesome place to hang out. I want you guys to be a part of it, so hop on over and join. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, as well as on Instagram and Twitter, at bjdell. And last but not least, I did start a new podcast as well. If you're an artist that wants to make money with your art, I made a podcast with you in mind and happened to name it, Make Money With Your Art. Uh, so I cover different topics and different ways that you can think about turning your passion of creativity into something that's gonna bring in money, whether it be a side hustle or something you could possibly turn into a full-time job. So definitely check that out. It's available on all the podcast networks and I'll leave a link in the description below. You click on that, it's gonna take you to wherever you need to find it based on the device you're using. So that's it for me and until next time, keep creating.